Thank you to Kenneth Copeland Ministries for sowing the airtime for this broadcast. There's enough power in every sick room and in every hospital room to raise up that sick one that may be describing you. Yes, you yes. may be in a sick room. Yep. You may be in a hospital room. And I want to remind you, power is present. That power is there to do a work. Believe in what's present, not try to get something, but notice that he's already made it yours. It's present right where you're at. Say, I receive that power. I receive, I receive that power. I receive it right now. I receive it right From now. From the top of my head. From the top of my to head. the soles of my feet. The soles of my feet. We are so thrilled to have you with us today for Jesus the Healer. Thank you for joining us. And uh, we're hungry for the Word. I know you are too. I've got a studio audience in here and we've come ready. We come ready to draw and ready to better learn how to be better doers. Amen. We've been taking the last several episodes and we're teaching on the subject of authority and dominion. Aren't you glad you got it? Yeah. Yeah. We are not just a victim of this life. We're to rule and reign over the circumstances of our life. And that's what Jesus uh, purchased for us. And we have been raised with him far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named. Notice this. He was raised far above all of those we would say different categories of demons uh, because they all opposed him being raised, but they weren't enough. <laughs> Why? Because greater is he, amen, that's in us than he that's in the world. And the same power, that resurrection power that raised him is working in us. Amen. And so that, that causes us to dominate and be in position of authority because of the position we've been raised to. We are seated with Christ in heavenly places. He's the head, we're the body. We have a shared authority with him. He took of his authority and shared it with us. We are one in authority. And he, when he wants something accomplished on the earth, he needs to involve someone with the authority that's on the earth, and yes. that's us. Yes. Amen. That's yes. us. Amen. And so that's why we need to make sure we follow the Holy Ghost. We follow the leading of God. We're doers of the Word because uh, as we exercise our dominion and authority, His will gets carried out on the earth. Yes. Remember what Jesus prayed when He was teaching His disciples. The disciples said to Him on one occasion, Lord, teach us to pray like John the Baptist taught His disciples to pray. And Jesus said, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Notice this. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. God's will is done in heaven. But how does his will get done on the earth? Through us. Yes. We're yes. co laborers with God, taking that dominion and the authority he has given us and laboring with God in the earth so that his plan, his will can come to pass in the earth. Amen. 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 We've been using as our golden text uh, Psalm chapter 8 and verse 4. So we're going to read there again today. Psalm chapter 8 and verse 4, it reads, What is man that thou art mindful of him? Think of this, you're in the thoughts of God. Yeah. You are in the mind of God. How can we, how can we yield to, to failure when we realize that he's, he's got us on his mind? We don't have to yield to anything but victory. Amen. Right. What is man that thou art mindful of him and the son of man that thou visitest him? Because we're in his thoughts, on his mind, he visits us. Yes. He visits us through his word. Yes. He visits us by speaking to us by his spirit. Yes. He visits us by giving us pastors that we sit under and we hear the word preached. He visits us by putting people in our lives that will say words that um, he has authored. Yes, yes. Right. Yes. Amen. Yes. So the, he, he, he visits us no doubt by his power. Yes. His power, his anointing will come upon us and bless us, move within us and bless us. But thank God we're his. Amen. Yes. So it says for in verse five, 
For God has made man a little lower than the angels. And as we've been saying every episode about this, is that this word is translated wrong because in the Hebrew, the word is not angels. The word is Elohim, which is God. So it should read this way in verse five, for God has made man a little lower than himself and has crowned him with glory and honor. Thou madest him to have dominion over the work of thy hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. Notice this, all things of this earth that come against us, they're under us. They're under us. Keep them under us. I remember something that in in connection with my husband, um, he went home to be with the Lord when he was 72. But when he was in his late 50s, he was diagnosed with cancer. And we were in the doctor's office the day that they had given him the report. And um, I didn't hear my husband say anything out loud at that time, but he just listened to what the doctor said and thanked him for his help. And we walked out and he went to his car. I went to my car. We had come, we had driven there separately. And later when we got back home, as soon as I walked in the house, I walked in about 10 minutes after him. And he said, when I walked in, he said, I've already got the answer. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, when I got home, I asked God, where did I miss it? Where did I miss it? And see, um, God, God, God will talk to you. (laughs) You don't have to sit and do a mental calculation going through, if I could say this, the mental Rolodex, you know what a Rolodex is? It's a card system. You don't just go through, well, is it this, is it that, is it this, is it that? Because the devil will, the devil will say, yeah, it's these five things. (laughs) And not only that, after these five, it's another 50 things, you know, Uh, you, you get in that mental arena and you'll never really locate the problems, the issues that we're we're authorized to deal with. Mm -hmm. But you go, if you, if you listen to your heart, Mm -hmm. listen to the one who knows. And so Ed said, I came home and I said, God, you don't miss it. I've missed it somewhere. Mm -hmm. Where did I miss it? And God said, you missed it in two places. And he told him, number one, you have not rested your body. He said, number two, you have not obeyed me in the prophet's office. I'd tell you to say something and you wouldn't say it. Mm -hmm. And so Ed said, okay, I repent of that. And God said, okay, in 30 days, it'll all be gone. On day 28, he went back to the doctor and the doctor said, somebody up there likes you because it was all gone. But it wasn't that God just liked him. It came into agreement with him. When you come into agreement with God and things of your spirit life get in order, your body starts responding. Your body starts lining up with the word of God. And so anyway, but one of the things, and I told you that to say this part of the testimony is that Ed told me later, he said, when I was sitting in the doctor's office and he said, he told me that I had cancer. He said, I could feel fear start at my feet and start coming up my legs. And he said, I just real quietly under my breath said, no, you don't, you get back down under there. Now, see, I didn't hear him. I didn't know he said it, but uh, his authority worked. His authority, he did not wait to get home to deal, he just dealt with it right there under his breath, real quietly. He said, no, you don't. But this is what I want you to see. It it came up under his feet. Why? Because it tells us here that God made man to have dominion over the works of his hands. Thou hast put all things under his feet. feet. Amen. Amen. It belongs down low. It doesn't belong up high around your head, around your thought life. Keep it down. Put it down. Keep it down. God already put it down. You keep it down because the devil's a violator. He'll try to come up to places he has no business being. Amen. And so we have dominion. We have authority. And it's so important that we recognize that we take our place in our authority and we use it. Now, one of the things also that God said to me in connection with our dominion and authority, he said, there must be a consistent exercise of dominion and and authority as a lifestyle to move into and bear fruit of the highest flow of that authority. So notice this, we all want to have the highest fruit 
of, of, of what God has provided for us. That won't come in manifestation by us just exercising our dominion um, randomly, right. periodically. Right. It's by consistent, consistent, consistent exercise, making it part of our lifestyle. Not that we're devil-minded, but we are we are, if I could say this, inheritance minded. And when something challenges our inheritance, we say, no, you don't. Amen. It's not because we're, we're just mindful of the devil. We're not, we're not devil watchers. No, no, not at all. Amen. Amen. We're not holding out against him. He has to hold out against us. Yes. And when he challenges our authority and what belongs to us in Christ, we stop and we say, no, you don't. No, you don't. And we do that consistently. We don't wait till we're in church. We don't wait till somebody else can agree with us in prayer, which is perfectly all right, right. to have someone right. to agree with you, but you don't have to wait for that. Yeah. Yeah. The moment things try to get out of order, deal with it. Yeah. Address yeah. it. Use your authority. Use your dominion. You have to speak words. Right. Our dominion and authority is expressed through the words that we speak that are in agreement with the word of God. Amen. Amen. So uh, consistency is such a big part mm -hmm of enjoying a life of victory. Yes. Yes. Procrastination of the use of our authority will produce the procrastination of our victory. Yes. Meaning yes. it will delay, it, yes. it will delay victory yes. in our life yes. if we are, if we delay exercising our authority. Yes. And sometimes yes. people will say to God or imply to God, even if they don't say it in these words, they imply it. Why, don't, why didn't you do something? Why did you let this happen? God allows what we allow. God permits what we permit. Why? Because Jesus told us, he said, I give you authority. I give you dominion that whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. So he's basically saying heaven will back you up, but something has to happen on earth so that heaven has something to do. Amen. So heaven has something to back up. He heaven will back us up, but that, that action begins on the earth, not in heaven. Amen. Jesus said, whatsoever you bind on earth, notice earth is listed first. Yes. Mm. Uh -huh. Then heaven will back us up. That's right. Amen. So we don't want to procrastinate in the use of our authority. Right. I want to again read 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 8, it instructs us, be sober, mm -hmm. be vigilant. What's that mean? It means that we're watchful. Yes. Because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Yes. Notice this, he's seeking whom he may devour. Yes. How does he know who he may devour? He observes them. Yes. Yes. Who resists and who doesn't? Yes. Who walks in their authority and who doesn't? He's watching to see how watchful we are. Yes. So we are to be sober. We're to be vigilant. But look again, it says uh, the devil as a roaring lion. He's not a, he's not a lion. He just makes, a, he makes the noise. As a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom resists steadfast in the faith. It doesn't say resist periodically. Right. Resist steadfast yes. in the faith. Take your stand and don't back off of it. Yes. This is talking about the exercise of our dominion and our authority. Resist steadfast in the faith. Why? Because watchfulness is the price of constant victory. Amen. 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 We have to put that habit in place spiritually that anytime something tries to get out of place, we, we got, we've got our authority on it. That's it. Amen. Uh, being vigilant is not just recommended, it's required. Yes. It's required. Uh, as a parent to have a certain outcome with our children, uh, we can't, it's not just recommended that we exercise parental authority. It's a requirement. It's a requirement, even more so with the devil. Amen. One of the things, and we were talking about this at the end of the previous episode, and one of the things that, that when he says be watchful, be vigilant, that includes watching in the spirit. Yes. Yes. That includes paying attention to things 
uh, that God would bring to you in your spirit because by doing that, God will keep us in front of situations. Yes. Remember what the Bible says? He'll make you the head and not the tail. Yes. Above, yes. not beneath. Yes. We get on top of situations. We don't get under them. Right. We get in front of situations, not behind them. Right. He'll make you the head, not the tail. On a dog, the head's in front. The tail is behind. Right. We shouldn't be living our life behind all the messes the devil's created, just cleaning up after all he's done in our life. No, we're in front of situations that we're dealing with them from a front position. That comes as we pay attention to watch in the spirit realm, meaning we spend time praying in other tongues and we keep ourselves sensitive to what God would show. The more we pray, the more we feed on the word and pray in the spirit in other tongues, it helps us to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit that will be more sensitive to his leading. For example, um, one of the ways the Holy Spirit comforts us is he prepares us. He prepares us for what's ahead. And you've heard me talk about it um, before my husband went home to be with the Lord in 2013. In 2011, the Spirit of God said to me, all I want you doing is practicing peace. Mm -hmm. Well, see, I heard that. I perceived that. Mm -hmm. And being sensitive to what the Spirit said to me and then doing it, the day my husband went home to be with the Lord, it did not de- derail my life, the ministry, the family, right. the church. It didn't take us off course. Right. Right. Why? Because in the spirit, the Holy Ghost put us in front of things. Yes. We're watching in the spirit. We're not just watching what happens out here in the world in natural right. circumstances and then cleaning up That's the mess right. after yeah. it. That's right. We're watching to what the Spirit would say to us to keep us in front of things. Now, talk about victory. My goodness, our victory is so total and complete. Amen. So watching. Um, One time I was, um, on a particular time, I was laying in bed at night, going off to sleep, and I was just praying in the Spirit. As I was praying in the Spirit, um, I had a vision. And in that vision, I saw a car accident happen. Now, um, praying in the spirit put me in a place of seeing and knowing. And so that's that's one of the benefits of speaking in other tongues is that um, you will see and know things before they happen. Uh If I could say it this way, prayers have prayers us as prayers have previews because some things we need to ready ourselves for. And sometimes God will allow us to, if I could say this, use our authority and stop some things that we had a preview of to keep it from happening. And so by praying in the spirit, I had a preview of and of something the devil intended to work against someone. Mm -hmm. And by that, I was able to, with my authority, deal with that Mm -hmm. and stop it from happening Mm -hmm. and having it happen, but didn't have the outcome that the devil intended. So in this vision that I had, um, I saw a car going down a road and I saw another car come and hit him on the driver's side. And that's all I saw. Uh, you say, what color are cars? I don't know. I just saw vehicles because those kinds of things aren't important to what God was showing. Yeah. Um, so I didn't see who it was. I didn't know who it was for. I did not see the outcome, but I knew this. It must have been tragic or God would not have even taken the time to show it. Yeah. 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 He's, he's rescuing people's lives. Yeah. Yeah. He's delivering people from death. Yes. So when I, I, now remember what I said, I was praying in the spirit when I saw it. Yes. It's because of praying in the spirit, I was sensitive so, the spirit, so God could show it to me. Yes. I was sensitive to God. That's good. Make, that, makes you, that makes you sensitive to what he's looking to show. Yes. So when I saw it, I did not keep praying in the spirit. Why? Because I, I need to deal with that. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't deal with the devil 
by speaking in tongues. Yeah. Amen. That's, right. Amen. That's, That's not right. the function That's of right. tongues. Yeah. That's not the purpose of tongues. He that speaks in an unknown tongue, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 2, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. No man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit he speaks mysteries. This is divine God talk between you and God that he involves you in things that you don't know about so that you can bring your authority. And, and be effective on the behalf of, some, of someone else or something else. Yes. Yes. And you're not, you're not talking to the devil. That's why when people will supposedly deal with the devil, they'll, you know, go after him in tongues, so to speak. That's not the purpose of tongues. No. That's not, you, if the, the way to go after the devil is see what God is showing, reveal what he says and take your authority <laughs> and use your authority. Amen. So I saw this happen. When I saw it, now I'm going to use my authority. I'm not going to keep speaking in tongues. I'm going to use my authority. So I said, Satan, in the name of Jesus. See, now I'm going to use my authority. Yes. Satan, in the name of Jesus, I bind you. Death, I bind you. I bind the outcome of that accident. Angels, I call for you to be around that person's life, around that scene to protect the people. What's the Bible say in Psalm 91? That the, that the angels will bear us up in their hands lest we dash our foot against a stone. Yeah. So I, what, remember what, what I quoted about Matthew, I believe Matthew 18, 18. Whatsoever you bind shall be bound. Whatsoever you loose shall be loose. I bound Satan and I loose the angels to work. They're not bound, but I'm assigning them. I'm loosing them into that situation. Why? Because they need, they need it's faith that gives them permission to work. That's right. And so they hearken to the word of God when it's spoken in faith. Right. And so, um, so that's what I did. I said, Satan, I bind you. Death, I bind you. And I dispatch the angels of heaven to be around that situation to protect and guard their lives. Um, then that's the end of it. I've used my authority. Then after that, I, I prayed again in tongues, but not to deal with the devil. But I said, God, if there's anything further I need to do, I'm going to pray in other tongues so that I'm sensitive to what you might tell me further. So I prayed in other tongues. He didn't say anything further, so I knew it had been dealt with. We're done. I didn't touch it again in my thought life. I didn't go and try to figure it out. I just left it in his realm. Amen. So a few weeks later, um, I get a phone call, and it's somebody that I knew that had been in a car accident and it played out exactly as I saw it. Mm -hmm. Well, um, when the medics arrived on the scene, they pulled out a body bag. They thought there's no one that survived this. Mm -hmm. But the person um, that I knew of that was in it, they came walking out. Oh, they, had, they had minor injuries. They did not have the injury that the devil intended. Yeah. Why? Because of our authority. When we watch... When we're vigilant, when we're sober, when the devil's walking about trying to devour something, uh, we're, 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 we're keeping tabs on him. Yeah. Amen. 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 That these things don't happen. Amen. As he, ought, as, as, as he intended for them to happen. Amen. And so somebody told me later, they said, Pastor Nancy, because I was teaching on this in one service and a woman came up and she said, I wish I'd have heard this weeks ago. I said, why is that, sister? She said, well, God showed me a dream of someone drowning. And she said, when I saw it, I, I prayed in tongues. She said, I spent a lot of time praying in tongues. And she said, and we just did their funeral three weeks ago. Oh, wow. See, she saw it, but she didn't use her authority. Right. Right. She didn't take her authority. And she said, if I would have known that, the right. person would still be alive because God was trying to show me to use my authority. And I just thought that it was just pray in tongues. Mm -hmm. See, thank God for the ability to pray in tongues, but we have to know the purpose is not so we can exercise our authority. Yes. We exercise our authority in the name of Jesus. Yes. Yes. Jesus' is the, Jesus's name is the master key for that. Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. Well, this is part of us being skillful yes. that we learn these things, we learn these truths so that we get results. Yes. Yes. I know this God is always endeavoring to help us. Whether or not we recognize the help 
is a different issue. But God always alerts. He always seeks to show, seeks to reveal every time, every time. In all of my years of being born again and being in the ministry, I've never seen a time when something happened that in talking to someone around that situation, somebody was alerted in some respect. Now, sometimes you can change and stop things. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes all you can do is prepare for them. But even that is a divine help. Even that is divine help. Amen. Because sometimes certain situations are between that person and God. Amen. But other times when your authority can help change the outcome, God's looking for that to happen. Amen. Amen. What a, what, what a, what a, a wonderful flow yeah. that God allows us to participate in when we walk in the authority that belongs to us in the name of Jesus. Thank God for that divine help. Amen. Well, right now, uh, that anointing to, he- to heal and to deliver is flowing. I can sense it. So right now, if you say, Pastor Nancy, uh, I'm in pain. My body, I've got all kinds of sickness or disease in my body. I'm facing difficult circumstances. Well, God has authorized us to join our faith with you. Amen. And the studio audience and I, we do that right now. So you release your faith and you receive it. And I say, Satan, you take your hands off their lives. You take your hands off off their bodies, from the top of their head to the soles of their feet. You take your hand off their finances. You take your hand off their family. You take your hand off their children, off their home, off their business in Jesus' name. You take your hand off their minds. And I say you be free in Jesus' name by his mighty power. Amen. Amen. Right where you're at, just say, I receive it. I take it. I take that power that works. It delivers and works in my behalf. Amen. Well, we are so blessed to get to come to you every day. And there's one reason we get to, and it's because Kenneth Copeland Ministries sows the time for this broadcast. And I want you to know, um, it's a, it's a seed we are so thankful for. And we ask you that if this broadcast is a blessing to you, Victory Channel is a blessing to you. The other programmers on Victory Channel are a blessing. If you're not already, pray about becoming a partner with Kenneth Copeland Ministries. Amen. Pray about it. We are. We invite you to because it keeps that voice coming into your your life and your home 24 hours a day. You can go to kcm.org and you can sign up to become a partner. But until we see you next time, remember this. Jesus is the healer. God bless you. To watch or listen to today's message and other messages by Nancy Dufresne, visit DufresneMinistries.org. Your life will be changed as you meditate on the revelations in this book, Visitations from God by Nancy Dufresne. Order your copy now at DufresneMinistries.org. We invite you to join us for our annual prayer conference here at World Harvest Church in Marietta, California, April 4th through the 6th. For more information, visit our website at DufresneMinistries.org. We trust you've enjoyed this message. Visit us at DufresneMinistries.org to learn of our upcoming meetings, share your testimony, submit a prayer request, or visit our online store. Thank you to the friends and partners of Dufresne Ministries for making this production possible.